want to do ever since you said goodbye to me. And the flowers in that bloom have just refused to bloom. Cause they all want you back, you see. Hello and welcome to episode 2 of the Corrado Lark Knitcast Podcast channel. There should be explosions here and there are it because I don't know how to do that in an iMovie. Ah, thanks for joining me. Uh, if you haven't watched the first episode, this is the second episode and I am Corrado Lark. You can find me as Corrado Lark on Instagram and Corrado Lark Knits on Ravelry, and Corrado Lark Designs on Ravelry, and just like last time, the second I start, look at this guy, girl, sorry, girl. This is Evie, if you haven't met her before, this is Evie. Anyway, I am still at my parents' house after the Christmas break, um, and I am about to go back to Astoria tomorrow, which is going to be, Evie, you gotta stay down. She will not stay down, she wants to come up. I know, you gotta sit down. Everything okay? She's okay. I promise. She's too cute. Anyway, uh, I'm about to go back to Astoria. Here I am, it's an Indian style on the couch. I, and there are some nutcrackers behind me, which are kind of blown out, but you can kind of see them. Uh, my family used to collect nutcrackers for a while. We used to just give them as presents, and they're kind of everywhere. Nutcrackers and birds. Karata Lark is part of it. Um, you can also find me on YouTube as Karata Alakata if you want to see me act or sing. It's all there too, <laughs> but this podcast is generally about my knitting adventures. Um, I've said before, I'm kind of new to it. It's only been a little over a year, and already, because of the holiday season, I have so much to share with you. Um, there were a few things I wanted to bring up and discuss before I started, and I completely forgot them, so <laughs> let's just start, why don't we? Um, I got some amazing Christmas gifts this year that were knit knitting related. Some of them were planned, some of them were not planned, um, and they're going to be shared with you. Oh, I said a flip up, but I have to put you down. Everything okay? <laughs> okay, great. I think we're okay. Evie, you gotta go down. Okay, you're gonna stay there. You stay there for them. Um, so, first things first, I, uh, I got what I had talked about last time, some Haya Haya needles. Uh, these came in a really cool case, and I think you're further away now. Let me zoom you in. Cool case. There we go. Better. <laughs> um, come in a pretty cool purple case. Uh, it has all your cords in it. It came with... Oh, I know. Uh, it came with a 16 inch, a 32 inch, a 40 inch, and clearly my least favorite, the 24 inch. I guess I just... Haven't needed to use that. Oh, I also got these stitch markers. Yeah, yeah. And this is where the key comes, right? You know how to use these things, don't you? you you're probably more experienced with an interchangeable set than I am. Anyway, <laughs> here's a little key for it. And then in this pouch I have, oh look, a cute little sheep that uh, can tell me what US size my needles are. Haya Haya for life. It's not their tagline. I'm just kind of telling my kids their tagline. Um, here's also, it came with these little rubber Haya Haya things. I don't really know what they're used for. Someone knows what they're used for? Please comment below. It's a nice time to bring up if you want to subscribe. I'm, I'm planning on doing this now every week or two weeks at least. Um, you know, kind of whenever I have some stuff to show, I'm gonna air it for you guys and say hey, and and yeah, here are the needles that this set comes with. Clearly, I'm using some still. I'm using my twos, my fours, my sixes. I like even numbers. I don't know, I, I kind of like odd numbers, not really. I really like even numbers, I kind of stick to them. Even like, when I'm clicking on the television, the volume can never be at like 23. It's 22, or it's 24. There is no in-between. 
<laughs> anyway, <laughs> that's this set and I am loving it so far. I, you know, I, as I kind of said before, I basically worked on clovers thus far and then my acrylic set, which I have here that I want to show you, um, which, you know, have been great to learn from, but this has made my life so much easier so fast. I forgot something. I'm going to have to go off camera and get it. Anyway, here's the acrylic set that I have been using. Um, it's been pretty good overall. The number, num like, they fade, like, when I'm using them. So, like, my eights, I just know where my eights because they're purple, and I like purple. Um, and I got ink on this case. As you can see, look at that ink. I don't know what that's from. Nothing else I had ended up with ink on it, but this did. Anyway, these are good, and I am still using them for a project that I will be showing you. Anyway. Um, so those are the needles that I have. And let's see, what else did I get for gifts oh now we'll get to the good stuff so as you may have remembered I did knit miss this year and I made about 25 things I gave pretty much all of them away at this point um, and they've been all really well received especially our Christmas Eve party because I gave away like 10 that night I think everyone kind of had all their stuff on people are asking me like how to wear the shawl or how to you know like what to do with it with some of them because you know not everyone knows how to wear a shawl naturally uh, I guess. Anyway. Um, so, and then my Uncle Paul had his hat and my Nani in her hat. Two adorables. So, I will do a little slideshow either in the beginning or the end. Depending um, on how I feel like formatting my podcast from now on. Um, and you'll be able to see a lot of that. I should actually put these somewhere to know that I already talked about them. I guess you live and you learn as a podcaster. Anyway. Um, let's see what else. Oh, I got this. It's not really knitting, but it is chocolate. Crystallized ginger. I think my mom must have gotten this at the Whole Foods, because I think I've seen it at the Whole Foods. It's really good for you. Sure, it's dark chocolate. I'm going to eat one little piece that broke off. Mmm. Mmm. There's the ginger. I love crystallized ginger. I like ginger in general. I hate people that talk with their mouth full. That wasn't a taste bad face, that was a like, let's finish this up so we can move on to the knitting face. <laughs> um, let's see, okay. This was fun. This wasn't exactly a gift, I'd say, but at the end of Christmas Eve, it was my mom, my brother, his girlfriend, and my nanny, and we had to drive my nanny back to her apartment. And so we go to the apartment and we walk up, we walk her up, she's in the cute little hat, my mom's like, let's take a picture. Okay, we take a picture. And we kind of did a tour of the apartment. Even though, you know, I've been there a million times. Crystal has only been there a couple. Um, and we got to see, like, old pictures. And, you know, kind of walk down memory lane on Christmas Eve. Um, it was really nice. But uh, other than the fact that we realized that a lot of the pictures that my parents have of me and my brother when we were little are, like, walking on ladders and, like, posing with our feet up. Like very dangerous for a baby. I guess that's like a thing. Maybe people do it off. What is this? What is it? Oh, the ginger. The ginger. Anyway, it's chocolate, not just ginger. Anyway, we uh, walked down memory lane and it was kind of funny because my mom was really dangerous with us with kids, as kids. She wasn't. She was a very nice mother. She just liked to stand us up in like vases and like see how we would look when we stand up as an adult. I don't know if that made much sense, but I'll explain later. Anyway, we're walking around and my nanny goes, oh, I have this big box of pajamas to give you, as you do. And it turns out she had like eight or 10 of these old 1960s pajamas. I think they're from 1967. My brother was looking into it. Great way, 100% cotton, size D, size D. Um, I have another pair as well. These are cotton flannel, um, and they're actually really comfortable. 
So we have pictures of that too that I'll probably throw out. Ooh, these do feel like final. I haven't really felt these ones. They're kind of still in the sprinkly plastic. Um, they're paisley and they are very fashionable. So I'll, I'll add some pictures that we took in these. We gave a pair to Brian Hogan, um, who's, he's uh, in the Air Force and he's home for the holidays. Uh, it's Caitlin and Sherry's, Sherry's son, Caitlin's brother, who I've talked about. Oh, this is what she likes to do. She likes to put her head like right here as she puts it down. Anyway, so that was one thing to walk down memory lane with. And then I'll talk about the other one that kind of happened before because we're out of sequence and I don't care. Um, I, at Christmas Eve, like I gave my hats to Sal and Michael and then they, um, they have a little store, like a little shop that's in like a plaza where they sell antiques. They sell a lot of like dining wear and bar wear, I guess, but they kind of, they love going antiquing. So they have uh, this whole basement filled with like all sorts of incredible stuff. And, you know, they knew obviously I was a knitter now and, and, and I was with Michael, my mom, my brother and his girlfriend. We're just rummaging through, and, and, so was, and Michael was like, oh, I think I have one of those, like, windy things. And I was like, what do you mean? Like, it's wooden, knitters use it. I'm like, a Swift? He's like, yeah, it's somewhere on here. If we could find it, you can have it. I'll find it for you. I was like, no, we're finding that. So we went around. First, we looked in the wood box. that wasn't in the wood box. So we're looking all around. He's like, oh, I don't know. I'll find it for you. I'll find it for you. We're like, we're still looking. I will be walking home with that. Lo and behold, out pops this. This will be my first Swift. I wasn't in the market for a Swift because I thought they would be too expensive for me to be purchasing at the time, but look at that. Um, it's pretty cool. It is made in Italy, as you can see on the bottom there. It does this, it's a nice light wood. This comes off. I don't know if that's usual for most Swifts, but this one does. And it works pretty great, because we will get there and I will explain that I have worked with it now. I kind of just like playing with it. I feel like it's like, I don't know, like I'm gonna fly up like a helicopter. We're gonna put that down since it hit me in the head. <laughs> anyway, I got this and I went, well, now that I have this, we'll get to what else I got there. I needed one of these, a ball winder. I got this at the Michaels. It was not on sale, but I had a 50% off coupon. So it was $15. Don't feel like too, it's a loops and threads. So far it's working um, pretty good now that I know how to work it. I will also get to that story in a second. Um, but. Yeah, I have this and I have this. So now I don't have to have them wind my yarn at the store. I can wind it at home. Hallelujah. I, I don't know if it requires a hallelujah, but um, I mean, I was fine with them winding in the store. I never really had much issue. I think it's because I'm a loose knitter um, that I didn't like have too much of an issue with it being wound up for a while and then me using it. I know people say that if it's wound up for too long, it tends to the, the fibers tighten so that your stitches may be uneven. Um, I haven't really experienced that problem. Oh, this also came with this clamp. You had to clamp it to the table. I got another C clamp for the Swift in case I need it. Well, by I, I mean my dad got it for me because he's really great. Uh, and it, it's been working somewhat like a charm. Before we get to that story, I think we should talk about the other incredible thing that we found at Sal and Michael's basement. Sal and Michael's basement. Anyway, um, he also gave me these. These are old, mainly sock and sweater pattern books. Um, this like blew my mind. I've never actually seen anything like this in person. You can't find this like stuff, you know, exactly on Ravelry, at least as I've seen. And now that I'm tackling socks, which we'll also get to, I'm super excited about this. This one was from the K Burns Yarn Shop, Needlecraft and, Access Craft and Accessories on Main Street in New Britain, Connecticut. Um, let me show this one up close. You can see it's printed right on the front that they, where it's from. Um, it's the seventh edition from 1944. 
like this is just incredible. I want to show you. I'm going to flip through a little. I know there's some stuff in here that I wanted to show you. <laughs> I mean, what is this? Pull out yarn? What is happening on that heel? I don't know. I haven't really read through all of it yet. I just kind of have flipped through. This one's just incredible, though. This one's very... It's just a lot of basic-looking socks. Like, beautiful, but, you know... You know, simple patterns um, that I plan on maybe adapting at some point for contem contemporary use. Here's another one. Um, this one doesn't say where it's from. It's Bernat. Uh, it was... 50 cents in continental USA. 75 cents for you in Canada. Sorry, Canada. I love you. I'd be Canadian if you let me. Copyright 1953. Um, I think this is the one that had the really cool pattern, which you may have seen stuff. I mean, it has some weird things, though, like, like I'm going to do feral dominoes. <laughs> like, what? Uh, it's so cool if you had someone who was into dominoes. Those were dominoes, right? I'm not going back to look again. No, this isn't what I wanted. I should have bookmarked this like a good podcaster, but I'm new. Stay with me. This one. How cool are those socks? I mean, you can see a little bit of the chart. Ooh, well, oh well. I don't know if this is even purchasable at this point, but how amazing are those? Like, I would love to knit those. I got that one. At this one, I don't know when this was printed either. I'm just finding that really fascinating. I'm just gonna do this so you don't have to see my face again. Ha <laughs> ha 2070, I don't know what's going on. It's saying like, weird, right? Man socks number 1968. I don't know, I don't know if it's like, why these dates are there. Knitting instructions, made in, this one's made in Canada, mm-hmm. There you go, Canadians. There you go. Here's another sock one. This one's a little ripped up. Um, the cover isn't exactly attached. But there, you know, another sock book. And then this one, <laughs> which is really funny. It's the Bernat Handicrafter Big Book of Ski and Sports Sweaters for Men, Women, and Youngsters. I love her bonnet on this side, too. Like, both of these. This is incredible. I would love, I, I don't know if the bonnet's in here, to be honest. I don't think I've seen that going through. This one was 75 cents in America, in, in, or in the United States of America, and one dollar in Canada. This one's 56. Um, this is an incredible gift. I have looked through, just, just like basic glancing through and loved every second of it. I can't wait to really read through it um, and see what I can learn. I mean, it seems to be, there was a lot of Fair Isle being done, especially back then. Um, this one's just so basic, the old one from the 40s. I mean, that's, that I think I'll probably end up knitting from first. So, uh, those were some of my gifts. And then, uh, um, I'll show something after this, uh, specifically. A little itch on my nose. Uh, but, Sherry gave me a knitting gift, which I am so appreciative of. Um, Sherry, I went with to that, to the... I went with to the farm. Me and Sherry went to the farm. We went to uh, Sanko's Beaver Brook Farm in Lyme, Connecticut. I've already talked about this on the first episode. And I bought the sock kit so I can make the socks. And she bought me the hat kit, which is the five sheep hat. It is pretty cute. I almost bought this at the store, so, um, so she knew that I would love it. Um, the fun part is, she got me the same marled yarn that I had for the socks, <laughs> which I'm actually really, I, I was thinking, oh, maybe I'll try and stop by the farm, see if I could swap it out, but I'm kind of into it, and you'll see why in a second. The difference with this kit is that it didn't come with as much white, and it came with this other little taupey, taupe, tan, not brown, that color. There's the white one, and there's the marled. If you only knew what this stuff smelled like, it's, it is like a, it's so sheepy. Hashtag sheepy. It's really bad. Uh, so I'm really excited to have that too. I think I might end up 
doing more socks with it. Um, yes, more socks. I, uh, on Christmas, maybe it was Christmas Day, maybe it was the day after Christmas, I ended up casting on my first sock. Yup. Uh, that was, it was, it's just finally happened, and it is the sock. Um, the pattern's not in front of me right now. Uh, maybe I'll go run and get that. A little tease. Oh. Oh. You're not gonna almost see what I made. Okay, I'm gonna pause the video, and I'm gonna grab the stuff that I forgot. Okay. We're back! Anyway, I got the pattern that I had forgotten to bring over here with me. <clears throat> it is the Beaver Brook Hiking Sock Pattern. Again, it's one of my first patterns that is not straight off a of Ravelry or I created that I'm doing, and it is my first sock. And here it is on my Haya Haya interchangeables. I have on the longest cord that I have, and this is the leg. Um, I have maybe that much more of the leg that I'm going to do. I think I'm going to go to six inches, and then I'm going to start turning my first heel. Um, I read through, or not turning the heel, you first heel. It just says heel, and then later it says you're turning the heel. I'm going to create my first heel um, very soon. And uh, I've read it through a few times. I'm a little, um, still a little perplexed on exactly how to do it. I'm definitely going to watch some more videos and research a little more into what I need to do. Ah, so parched. I could have done this when I paused the video and I got something, but now I'm going to do it for you, the viewer. Mmm, water. Anyway, here's the sock. I, I love, I was a little nervous when I was doing the marling because I've never done a marled yarn before. Or done a marled, I've never worked with a marled yarn before. Um, and so I was nervous that when I started putting the, the creamy white in, you wouldn't really see it. What, how it worked in my head. I was like, is that going to show up that I'm doing a stripe? Is it going to be clean? Oh, it's clean. It's it's so cool. I uh, I put a little video, little not video, what do they call it? What do the kids call it these days? A boomerang. There's a boomerang on my Instagram feed um, where I like tried it on to see if it would fit. Uh, and it did. I was a little nervous about it because when I was talking to the woman at the farm about when I bought the yarn, I was like, hey, you know, I want to learn to do socks. This will be my first sock. It's a good idea. She's like, yeah. She's like, maybe you should go up a needle size because your foot's, I'm like an 11, 11 and a half. She's like, uh, you know, I normally, it says for a size six. It, she said, recommended going to a size seven. I started the size seven and I didn't like my outcome because again, I'm a loose knitter. So I went down to a size six and I tried it on and it fits great. They stretch awesome. I think I am going to do another pair and give them to my dad because I think he would really enjoy this. It's it's super crunchy. There's no other way to say it. But, especially on your foot. Oh, look, it's even kind of cool as a cuff. It's my version of all the single ladies, but without saying ladies because I'm a gentleman. I think it's really cool. That was upside down. Now it's right way. Oh, is it better this way? Let's try it. Oh yeah, this would be so cool as a sweater. I mean, it would be itchy as heck, but but right, like that little detail. Maybe I'll do that on the sweater that I will be doing at some point in the near future. That I don't have the yarn. Oh, oh, Evie, you gotta go. Oh, hello, hello, world. Ooh, a circle of life. Um, yeah, and so this is my poorly caked yarn. I um, I kind of spoke about it. I'll speak about it now a little. I was struggling at first when I was trying to wind yarn. <laughs> I didn't realize, even though I've seen people do it in stores, I've watched people do it online, I've watched how to do it, I've I read the manual, you know, the what manual that came with this, loops and threads, ball winder. I didn't realize that you wind the yarn here and then you go like this and so this gives you that tension back and forth I, I didn't realize 
that's how that why that was there. I thought that was there like when I attached the yarn and then I was holding it from here and winding. And so my balls were like everywhere. Jody, get your mind out of the gutter with that one. Anyway, I, we, I was struggling with it. So uh, that brings us to last night, um, I or yesterday. Uh, me and Crystal, uh, Crystal had the day off, so we decided to go up to the web store in Northampton, Massachusetts. Um, if you don't know or you, you're still in the area, I think they, the sale is still going on. They have a big sale going on right now. This is just like, what is my pose, my posture today? Um, I'm gonna have to yoga that out. But knitting is the new yoga, so I don't know if I really should be doing yoga anymore. I think I should just knit and say, ooh, I'm healthy. <laughs> so we go to the web store. Um, it was Crystal's first time at an actual yarn store. Not actual, but a yarn store that isn't like a Michaels or Joann's and they see more Hobby Lobby. Um, so I knew she would have an incredible time because, you know, she calls it the Home Depot of yarn. That's how she put it. She's like, you have everything you need. Like, there's so much. She was running around like a, a girl in a candy store. A kid in a candy store, I guess is the phrase, but she's a girl and I felt like I had to state that. Anyway, um, there might be a picture of that in this little slideshow that I plan on making as well. Um, or some pictures of it. So we went to the web store. There's a lot of sales going on. Um, for, we basically, she got what she needed, I got what I needed, and we kind of checked out, and then we realized that two, they had two rooms that were normally classrooms, two, normally classrooms that were all sale items, including sale Madeline Tosh. Did I buy any? No. They had this beautiful Madeline Tosh sock yarn that I really wanted, really bad, I mean it was 100% merino, but a sock weight. I guess that happens. Sock yarn isn't just like nylon-y. I can't tell if this is making me look like bunched up or something. This posture of mine is just horrendous today. <laughs> anyway, um, <clears throat> let's do a little water break again and I will talk about my purchase. So Crystal got some incredible stuff. She got, um, she got some Malabrigo, the Rios. Um, which I recommended to her, you know, because it was it's a good price, and it's beautiful. They have beautiful colors in it. Um, I used it for two of the hats that I made. I have some left over still that I can make something with, which I might talk about. Um, anyway, so we did that. You know, got, she got that. She got two other yarns. She got a lot of Peruvian yarn, and by a lot, I mean all Peruvian yarn. Uh, she is Peruvian. I don't think she realized that good yarn, a lot of the good yarn comes from Peru, especially alpaca. So she you know, loved that fact. She was talking to her mom about, you know, she called her mom on the phone being like, oh my God, should I only get Peruvian? Like, can I get other, no, just Peruvian. So she got Peruvian yarn and she has some, and so we wound a lot of it up. Um, well, we tried, I was still learning. So the first one that I made, uh, it was a mess. It's really bad. It, it was like yarn tentacles coming out the ends. Um, and then the second one, I was like winding it and it was really tight and it got all tangled. And by all tangled, I mean like half the ball was in a giant knot. <laughs> so my mom gets involved. She takes it off the, off the winder. She starts untangling it. Just, <laughs> it was too funny. <laughs> Crystal ends up helping. I was kind of, it gave me an anxiety attack, not gonna lie. I was so anxious. Evie, do not eat the yarn. You know it's not food for you. She likes the stuff that really smells like sheep. She loves it. Anyway, um, so we, uh, so we were winding all the yarn and it got tangled. And basically I ended up rewinding everything for the most part that I had already done at the end of the night or this morning. It took us almost the full 12 hours to untangle that yard. I think we spent maybe four hours on it last night, multiple of us, and then I spent I spent about a half hour, Crystal spent about an hour this morning, and it was finally done. She also taught me how to wind a ball by hand. Like, I've, I've looked into this online, 
like trying to say, you know, when I didn't have a winder and swift, like how do I get those like tight yarn balls? I know you can do that by hand, I just don't know how. And she showed me where you just, you wind four around your hand and then you fold that. Let's see, let's do it here. Four around your hand, four. Take it off, wind it, or pinch it like this. And then you start winding around this way. Four, two, three, four. Turn it. One, two, three, four. Turn it. One, two, three, four. Turn it. One, two, three, four. And I guess that's how you make a yarn ball. I swear I have looked online and I haven't found that answer. Um, she said she learned from her dad who doesn't knit or anything. So I don't know. <laughs> she doesn't know. That's just how she learned. And it's a great tip. Um, maybe I'll show it sometime when I have a ball that I would like to wind by hand. Probably not though, because I have a yarn ball and winder and swift. Ah, it's really great. Anyway, we got there from the web store, didn't we? So I, um, since airing my first podcast, have gotten a lot of, you know, some wonderful comments, a lot of likes, some subscribers, and I've gotten some attention on Ravelry. Um, thank goodness, because I was struggling with it for a while. Um, and, uh, and that lovely woman is going to be test knitting some of my hats, which is incredible. I can't wait to hear what she thinks and to work on them and to really perfect them for you guys um, so that I can really start putting out some quality stuff. Not that I don't think I have been writing quality patterns. I just, you know, there's only so much I can do knitting it myself and then transcribing that when I don't know what everyone kind of uses for such things. Um, but that comes up because when I was at the web store, I was like, I have two main things. One thing I'm not going to talk about today. I will talk about another day. It is a little bit of a surprise for someone, um, who I know may be watching this. Um, but we'll get there. And then I wanted to knit up my pattern in the triangle for mom. Um, I have done it once before, but I gave it away. So I didn't have a picture of it. And I've been messaged I think three times asking for a picture of it and you know there's been some good downloads without the picture because it's it's you know I wrote it cute pretty cute you know but <laughs> uh, I was on a mission to find some worsted ish weight yarn for it I think the pattern would work no matter what weight you use you could use super bulky you could use lace um, you would just need different yardage for that um, but I knew I wrote it with the intent for a worsted weight two or three balls or skeins. And I think you'll get a nice, yeah, at least two, and it will work. Um, so I picked up for the first time, Noro. I've always eyed it. I've never, I, I've always felt it and been like, what is this? Like it's, it's woolly, but not in, I mean, this is, this one's 100% wool. Um, it's the Kurion, Kurion? My Japanese is not great. Um, and so I picked it up and I was, oh, I went, swiped it through a bunch because they had a lot on sale. And I knew I wanted 100% wool because I was like, you know, I don't know who I'm going to give this to. It might just go to me. Um, it might go, you know, who knows. And so I picked up this colorway. I think it's color 366, lot A. This was the what I saw. And I was like, yes. Because I could totally wear that. It's, you know, the chocolatey, or charcoal -y into the taupey, into the yellowy, perp in the purple. And um, I started knitting on this. I started doing the triangle for mom this morning, um, again. And I, I'm loving this yarn. I'm in a super crunchy mood. Crunchy. You know, I have the socks going, which are real crunchy. I've got this going, which. I mean, the only way to describe it is crunch. It's light, and I think it would be really great or cool for like a sweater, probably. I mean, it might be itchy. I don't know how it's gonna wear. I don't know. I'm just gonna wash it and say it's nice because it looks pretty. Because it looks pretty. Like, this is where I've gotten so far. Uh, when I wrote the pattern, I said it calls for a gradient yarn. I'm using my acrylics, um, which are working for this because they're, they're still sharp. They're pretty sharp. Um, and I just wanted the long cord and this is where I'm at. 
I wanted to get to the purple for you guys, if you can see that. Like, this is the wrong side. <laughs> That's the right side. Not that it matters, because you use gradient yarn in this pattern, and it's just basically knitting across. It's a free pattern, so I'll tell you. And you, you're just knitting front and back on the end the whole time. So what my, so basically it's gonna grow exactly like this all the way out, and then you can wear it like so. Wow, it's the best scarf I've ever worn. It almost works because the needles are so long, almost. But uh, that's where I'm at. I, um, so I got to this point, and really I noticed it maybe during the yellow, but look at this color that was hiding in there. Like a bright pink. I talked on the last podcast how pink isn't my color. I might still keep this for myself and still wear it. There is someone who I, when I saw this, I went, they might really love that because it's just unexpected. Um, look, it goes all the way to green, but I didn't even look at this before. Like, this is incredible. I mean, you can tell whoever, however they manufacture it, you can see this area where it's a little felt, oh, not felted, it's, it's just very loosely wound. So I have a feeling it will pill. Someone who has worked with Noro before may know that it will pill. I just, from doing it like this area, I made sure to knit a little tighter than the rest of it. Um, but I want it to, you know, I want it to have a little give. I want it to be a little flexible because it, it is intended to be like a scarf shawl type thing. Um, and it's not just for mom anymore. Because it's either way, it's not going to a mom. It's either me or, or my friend. Um... I, I'm loving doing it again. It's really just, it's one of those TV knits. Um, Crystal, who I, I had her get the Rios, um, she got two different colors. So I told her, she's never striped something. I was like, listen, you've already got the technique down because she started it with another yarn. It wasn't working for her. We got this new yarn to really, you know, to make sure it worked. Uh, but I told her, you should learn to stripe. And this is a great project to learn something. If you don't, if you know there's just a basic technique like striping or you know or if you have like a lot of minis this would be really cool with a lot of minis because you would just keep changing the colors whenever it happened it could be in the middle it could be at the end it doesn't matter just keep going and it will all work out because it's just garter across uh, yeah and this was only this morning I'm loving it I really love this purple I love purple so much it's just my color Especially lately. So, Noro, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. It's McDonald's, not Noro. Um, I have another whip. To, oh, let's swipe this up. Let's see where we are. Okay. I have a whip. Um, this whip is actually in my new project bag. What? I have a project bag. I talked about it on my last podcast, saying how I wanted one. I've never had one. I wasn't anticipating one. And let's just say, the person who gave me this, Crystal and Devin, weren't anticipating this to be a project bag either. This is an American Crew official supplier to man bag. Mm. <laughs> um, <clears throat> that was really cute, right? <laughs> um... This had some hair products and some cologne in it. It was one of those things, I think she got it at Ulta when we went on Thanksgiving break, for Black Friday we went. So I think that's when she got this. Um, it's got this handle on the side, super cool. This little chain here, this was attached a little like, what's inside? And I kept it just cause, this is my stitch marker that I kept on my bag. Yeah, that's not, it's just there. Um, and inside this, I have my Sockhead Slouchy Hat. I talked about this on the last podcast, and it's true what podcasters say. When you talk about something that you haven't knit for a while, and you go, oh, I should talk about this because maybe I'll get it done, it pushes you to get it done. It's like the yarn heavens have opened up, and I have been able to put the time into this. So this is with my Olan, Olan Yarn, Moonlit Colorway, Sock. 7525, um, merino nylon, beautiful. And I'm almost done. I started working on this on Christmas Eve, again. I didn't put my stitch marker in, even though I had planned to. I was about there when I last spoke to you, and I knit that much. 
I am absolutely in love with this hat. I'm almost done. I, uh, I have maybe an inch or two at most if I really want to go there um, to go. Only modifications I made is I actually ended up doing an extra like inch of the two by two rib on the end. Uh, it wasn't intentional. I just was knitting on it in the car and kept going. And the next time that I had a tape measure to measure, I was like, oh, I'm an inch over. Oh, well. Um, yeah. So let me just, I'm going to put this on because it's so ready to be put on. Look at that. If you just ignore this part, like how cool is this hat pattern? It's super basic. I mean, it's just, you're just knitting and this is a two by two rib. But some, and I, I mean, I haven't really even looked at the decreases, I, but I know, you know, maybe they're they're a little more different, more original or whatever, but this hat's so cool. I can't wait to live in this thing. And I will, because it's that comfortable. Um, who knew that sock yarn was really cool on your head? Socks on your head. Anyway, that was really trying too hard. So it was interesting about this. Um, I had this on my size two 16 inch clovers. Uh, I was doing that till about here, I would say about here, um, from the, you know, at the top, the brim to there. Um, and once I got to about here is when I noticed on the clovers, some of the black dye was leaking onto the wood. Like the wood is probably permanently dyed just a little bit black from it. Um, it's kind of to be, I, I would expect it just cause this yarn, yarn is so, I mean, in, in person it's even more vibrant but it for it's like a vibrant black a vibrant lavender a vibrant blue um if there is such a thing to all those things <sighs> it's a joke i kind of made in the last podcast so not being that original today um but i was on the 16s uh the 16 inches those twos and then when i got my new haya hayas right here i was like oh let's go to magic loop why not uh, on the twos on there? I was magic looping from about there to there. And if you look really closely, I'll try and find it. I was starting to get some ladders, which I've never had a problem with before. I know they exist. Um, I Maybe not to say I haven't had a problem. I, I think I had some of my gloves somewhere, but I sutured it. Um, yeah, see right here's one. See that little light spot? Yeah, I, I think this will even out with time. Uh, it's kind of been my experience with this kind of stuff. It'll And especially if I block this, which I, I'm debating if I'm going to block it or not. Um, I love blocking. I like the smell. This stuff already smells so good, so it doesn't really need the extra smell scent. But um, I do like that it evens everything out and really just makes your work look professional, even if it isn't. But I was magic looping from there to there, and then I was like, you know what? Let's just go to the 16, the 16 inches with the two still. And I did. Um, interesting enough, but maybe I can just do a little bit for you. What's going on here? Why isn't it moving for me? Done? Okay, anyway. Don't know where that came from. But because these aren't short needles, they're like, you know, longer needles attached to a 16 inch cord. No, oh, don't do that. Um, these are long, so it almost, you're knitting in like a, like this would be a heart if it were there. You're knitting in this like opal, I think opal shape is what it is, instead of just a round. Um, I'm not finding it to be a problem. I started knitting a little tighter I thought I was my gauge had changed a little too much to be a little loose, a little too loose. Um, so I'm I'm just conscious of it knitting a little tighter. I can't wait for this to finish. It'll be finished for the next time I talk to you. That's for sure. I mean I knit, you know, this much in four days maybe on this and other stuff. Um, the sock, the the shawl, and the hat. I'm kind of like that with my knitting. I like to have one big project, one medium project, one small project. Right now I'm kind of in between the small and medium because the sock's new and as basic as this is, it's a lot of knitting because it's sock yarn. Um, at least for me, it goes not the fastest. I'm trying to put this in, but this cord's, this yarn is too long. There's never too long yarn. 
yarn is never too long is probably a better phrase. Editing. Um, so yeah, it's in this cute little makeshift project bag, which I am actually loving. So now whenever I'm looking at things like cologne and stuff, I'm going to be looking at these little bags being like, can I use this as a project bag? Um, and it works perfect. It's like the perfect little size. Two in one. Free project bag with the sampling of all the stuff. Thanks, Crystal. Thanks so much. It's sincere, but I don't know why it came up. My intention was insincere, but I am sincere saying it. That's just the actor in me, just being real actory. I don't know. Um, that's pretty much my my Christmas ish stuff related stuff um, for this year. I am still here, as I've said, in Colchester, Connecticut. Uh, about to go back to a story in New York where I um, plan on knitting a lot and finding, uh, I plan on auditioning a bunch. I've been submitting for a lot of auditions today. Um, and I am going to be looking for more background work because that's how I pay the bills and it works. And it's really, really fun in New York. Um, we saw my, I was on Beat Bobby Flay. My face was just like, I was, and I think I talked about this on the last one. I should really watch the last one before I do a next one, isn't that? That's how you podcasters do this, huh? Anyway. Um, I thought it'd be fun since I was here. I was like, oh, let me see what I made last year for some people. And I found these two um, scarves that I made last year. Uh, this is one that I, th I think I knit this for my brother. Um, he moved out, but he left this. Really good of him. Good job, Devin. Good job. Um, or DevOp. I'll just tell that why not. My brother, he's four years younger than me, when we first got computers in the house, um, he would always type in his name D-E-V-O-P instead of D-E-V-O-N. And so it just became a thing, so I'd call him DevOp every once in a while. Anyway, this is out of the cannoli yarn. Have you ever seen the cannoli yarn? I don't know exactly what brand it is, cannoli. Um, this one, I think, will actually almost wrap too. Yeah, there you go. That's this scarf that I, I made. It is just a, um, I think it was a three by one, three knit, one purl, three knit, one purl, all the way down. I started it on, you know, the cast on end, went all the way. Um, I start. I just, you can see, I had just learned how to weave in my ends with this one. This was, I remember I made this one in December last year. Um, because at that point I learned that, oh, I should weave in my ends instead of burn them. That's what I thought you did. I was like, oh, I need to seal this up so it doesn't fringe. Burn. No, not good. Some of those products, mm, they were interesting, those first ones. <laughs> anyway, I made this. It's actually, it, it's a little crunchy. No, it's, it's, got, it's very soft and it pillowy, um, but it, do, it does feel like the 100% wool that it is. It's not that, like, it's not a super wash. It's not a, I don't think it's a super wash. Um, anyway, it is super warm if it's not super wash. Um, and then there's this one. This I didn't actually knit for Christmas. I lied. That was my one one that I'm showing from last Christmas, I guess. Maybe I'll show more at some point when they come up in my life, you know, past projects that I've done for people. But this project I did actually, I want to say the end of the summer. Um, this was one of the first projects, project, 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 this is one of the first projects I did, uh, this year, um, after I, you know, last year I did the whole Christmas thing, and then I put it on hiatus for six months, and then I just ordered some yarn off webs, I honestly don't remember what it was, I know it's a wool, um, and I made this seed stitch, yeah, I think it's in seed, um, this scarf. I'm pretty sure I used the pattern for this. Um, it's just seamed together. I don't. I, I haven't learned how to Kitchener yet. I actually, for a project that I'm doing, I will be teaching myself to Kitchener because I like the look of it. Um, but really, it doesn't matter. This, I wore this yesterday to Webs, um, and I, I knit it for my mom, uh, but I might be taking it. <laughs> It might be mine again, because I'm loving this color. I, I like the fit of it. It's not, I mean, it's not like the most masculine thing in the world, but who cares? I'm just being neat. 
I'm just be me. Just leave that there. So yeah, I think I'm gonna take this one. I, I'm loving it. I loved wearing it yesterday. It was super warm, and it was a cold day, and it's just gonna continue to be colder up here in the Northeast. Especially in New York. Like, Connecticut's definitely colder by temperature, I think. Uh, not definitely. I think it's colder by temperature than New York. But because you're walking around everywhere in New York, I think it just feels colder. Like, I want to be warm, like, dressed up warm all the time. Here, like, I can go out somewhere and be like, eh, I'll just, like, wear a coat. I'll be fine. Because I'm going to sit in a car and have a heater blowing on me anyway. In New York, you don't really have a heater going with you as you're walking down the street to go pick up your shawarma. You just don't. So I, I need the woolly one, the woolly scarf, because right now I am, uh, I just washed my uh, cotton and linen scarf. Um, it says it's machine washable, that Cabot sugar bush, which I used for it. So let's see how it comes out. Um, it's in the wash right now. And it's cotton and linen, so it's not the warmest thing, as beautiful as, and as wonderful as that scarf is. Um, so I think I'm gonna need this. Sorry, mom she'll give it to me she, she's nice about that kind of stuff um oh she loved her shawl absolutely loved it she wore it three days in a row that's for sure she wore it to christmas eve she wore it christmas day she wore it the next day when we were out shopping um i think she showed her co-workers at this point i know they love this kind of stuff i i did you know one of them for tammy her co-worker um the blue and pink uh pure joy um but yeah, she's really into it. She really loved the, the colors. She wants something next, she was saying. She wants something like charcoal-y, brown-y, something a little like darker, more neutral um, to wear around the house. Uh, I remember it was a Grocery Girls episode that I watched where uh, Tracy had knit something almost a little crunchy that was like in a tan. And it was, she wants it rectangular, is, it was what she was thinking. And I showed her some, showed her the tra changing light shawl. Maybe I'll do that. Um, I don't know. I know she's gonna come with me to Vogue Knitting Live. Uh, I think Sherry's coming too. Crystal may be coming. We all, my whole family might be going to Vogue Knitting Live this year. Um, where it's kind of taking off in my family. Uh, my mom's pretty into it. She started watching some podcasts as well. Um, I know she's into Christy Glass. I mean, because there's reasons. Um, but she's, she's pretty into it. And we're, you know, we're in talks to maybe go something further and really do something in this fiber business. It'd be fun, you know, dyeing or, you know, I'm already writing patterns and I don't know, we'll see where it goes, but uh, we're at least gonna, we're at least gonna dye something just cause we wanna see how it comes out. We have a great concept for some dot from, for some colorways. Um, it'll be really cool. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I'm really excited for the new year. I, I think uh, 2017 was a really good year for me overall. I mean, I became an equity actor. I, I started working on TV and film and background. I, you know, did some other shows. I did, you know, I had a pretty stable year overall, which is great because, you know, some of my years have been a little rocky. I think it's part, part of the nature of the business. Um, you know, you're up and down. There's highs and lows. Super cliche, but that's the life of an actor. <laughs> um, but this year overall was, was a pretty good you know, upswing, um, and now I can go in for union jobs, uh, union acting jobs, which is great. I can just, you know, I just show my equity card and now I'm seen in the door, kind of, pretty much regardless, I think. I don't know, I have a meeting, I think it's the 8th of January, equity has like initiation, this is the rules, these are the rules, grammar, these are the rules. <laughs> um, so that'll be pretty cool. I think I'm gonna keep this episode a little bit shorter than the last one. I, I've had some, you know, my family has commented on it saying they might think they think it's too long. Uh, I've had, you know, some other people that, you know, friends that I've watched have been like, I'm not gonna watch the whole thing. Uh, it's a long, long podcast. I mean, I'm kind of used to it because I think the knitting podcast world, people tend to shoot for longer videos because we have a lot on our minds that we need to share with you all. <laughs> um. Okay, I was just making sure those nutcrackers butts weren't facing you the whole time. It is a trick. Oh, that's what I'm gonna do. My parents are out right now. Um, they're both working. So I'm totally gonna, <laughs> I've done this before. I'm gonna turn all of the nutcrackers so that their butts are facing out.
<laughs> it's gonna be so good. I'm gonna do that. I have to clean the house a little bit for my mom so she doesn't have to do it all. I'll play with the dogs. Oh, poor Daisy. Our, our dog Daisy, who you haven't seen. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll include a picture. That's where I was going to include a picture. I don't know if I did or not, but that's where I was planning on it. Uh, Daisy's super cute. She's a little chihuahua mix. Um, she hurt her hind leg. Uh, we think we think maybe because like she normally doesn't come up on the couches. We think maybe if she was jumping off, she hurt her hind leg. Um, but it was a few days where she wasn't walking on it. It was, you know, like a little chicken wing. And now she's starting to walk on it. So she is getting better, thank goodness. Our dogs. Poor Mickey. My other, our other dog, Mickey, is a Shih Tzu as well. And he's he's old. I think he's 13 now. Um, he's getting a little a little senile. He wears a little diaper because he tends to pee pee and poo poo in the house. It's kind of cute, but kind of sad. But um, he doesn't, he's not in pain or anything. He, he's still happy and still living, you know, living a good life. It's just, he's getting old. Um, anyway. Those are my dogs. I just thought of them because they're all laying down super sleepy right now. They're just so tired. The most tired. Um, my mom, uh, Evie needs a haircut really bad. And she, my mom keeps going, can't you just like weave her hair? We'll just, you, you know, you'll just use her hair as yarn and you can make something with it because she has that much. Ah, the joke's funnier when my mom says it. <laughs> okay. So I think I'm officially going to sign off from episode two, the, I don't know, I haven't thought of a title for this one, uh, the looking to the new year episode. <laughs> I think that'll be it. Okay, uh, thank you so much for watching. If you like what you saw, uh, smash that like button or subscribe. I plan on doing this again every week for you guys. And uh, feel free to message me. Um, you can email me at karatolark at gmail.com. Um, you know, join the Ravelry group. I have a Ravelry group for the podcast I started, the Karate Lark podcast, or Karate Lark Nickcast podcast channel Ravelry group. <laughs> uh, join there. I'll probably make a Facebook page. You know, I plan on, uh, taking this as big as we can make it because <laughs> it'll be pretty fun. Uh, and I'm having so much fun already doing this for you guys. Uh, so thank you. I will see you in the new year in 2018. It's going to be a great year. I'm going to knit so many things. It's going to be so good. And you will too. Maybe I'll do a knit along. Knit along would be awesome with a giveaway. Ooh, that'd be really cool. Okay. Uh, thank you guys. And I'll see you soon. Bye. All the boats have been blue. They don't know what to do ever since you said goodbye to me. And the flowers in that gloom have just refused to bloom. Cause they all want you back, you see, mm -hmm, naturally.